hi guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for checking out this video on this channel i make a lot of different videos related to animals so that includes zoology my personal animals captive breeding mostly reptiles uh, reptile care and then i share my journey with my giant schnauzer vader on here as well so you kind of get a mix of everything and this is stuff that i don't share on instagram where you may know me as venomous and so i don't share a lot of this content on my instagram page so i really appreciate those of you who support me on here because i'm really trying to make this grow i'm an author with reptiles magazine and also a zoological educator i have a bachelor's in science biology concentrated in zoology and so today's video is going to be all about zoology and what types of careers you can get with your zoology degree and my personal journey and what i have done with my zoology degree as well i did make another video all about zoology and should you get a zoology degree and you can check that out there that was like a year ago i believe and so let's just get right into it i have some notes right here on my heart sticky notes and i will be sharing all of that with you hopefully as long as i don't get interrupted <laughs> and so the first thing is that animals are an industry people have been buying selling trading taking animals for a very long time and so over time it's changed a lot with the laws and regulations but if you're like me you probably are interested in zoology because you want to work with animals hands-on touching, experiencing, learning about animals and their behavior. And so you can take that so many different ways. And zoology is a good starting point professionally because it does help prioritize you when on your resume, it says that you have a degree in the animal sciences like zoology or even biology. You can do a lot with that. So if this is the way you're going, I hope this is helpful for you. And here are some tips that maybe I wish I would have known as I was looking for a professional career and going into that degree program. The first thing is that animals are an industry. If you're in school, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be getting hands-on experience with animals. It definitely is possible, but I think it's more rare, especially depending on where you live. Animals are an industry, and so that can mean so many different things, and I feel like people take it in a very compartmentalized way whereas they're only in this specific direction and this is the right way and this direction is the wrong way but for me in my opinion the animal industry overlaps in so many different branches and ways and so i believe when we understand that we can collaborate better and really just be more progressive for this industry and so in the animal industry, you could be a captive breeder and seller. You could sell animals within the pet trade. Now, of course, this is legally regulated and permits are required, but a degree is not. And so you can be an animal breeder without a degree and that could be your whole life. But don't think you're gonna go into breeding animals and it's going to be easy or you're going to get rich very quickly. It's definitely not like that. It's really hard work. Animals are every day you need to show up. There aren't vacations or time off or anything like that. And so it's something I really feel is super important to keep in mind. And maybe just having pets is a great place to start to see if you even enjoy working with animals hands-on and the truth, which really isn't glamorous or fun or even interesting. It's just repetitive and you have to be doing the same things over and over again to keep the animal healthy and living a good life. More parts of the animal industry are of course zoos and so I feel like zoology most people think of working in a zoo right? Well you have two different types of zoos you have private zoos and then you have AZA or government funded zoos and there's a huge huge difference there because many AZA government funded zoos have a no touch policy with their exotic animals which means they do not promote hands-on interactions with animals you're not allowed to take pictures with them if you're a zookeeper and things like that because they don't want to represent hands-on interactions with wild animals and there are some good points with that but animal behavior is one of the most important parts of working with animals especially exotic species and it can be extremely important for you and the animal you're working with whereas aza zoos may not let you work hands-on with a species private zoos there are usually no rules and unfortunately 
The ACA zoos rarely ever want to work with private zoos for conservation or things like that. They seem to be very secluded in their own world and they don't really want to branch out into the private sector, which is what we call the private side of zoos and that is when just people like you and I, private citizens, own exotic animals and oftentimes a lot of permitting is required for that which you really need to look into your own state for that. Another part of the animal industry is the scientific branches and so these are the academic research studies or universities or colleges that are working on research and so many times research involves the other branches. They involve going to zoos or they involve using private collections. I've seen multiple academic studies that use private collections of animals such as ball pythons for a specific genetic study or like 3J's tortoise sanctuary, a private conservatory. They have been outsourced multiple times for academic research studies within different biological departments and universities and things like that. So again, the branches overlap. If you work at the zoo, that doesn't mean that you hate the pet trade. I mean, you can, that's your choice, but oftentimes all of these branches within the industry of animals overlaps. And that's how I believe we learn so much about the practical ways of involving animals in our everyday life no matter what you are with a zoology degree. Hi, it's me again really quick. After watching this video a couple times during editing, I realized that I left out a pretty important job description with a zoology degree, which are conservation positions. And conservation jobs can range from private conservatories to government positions and everything in between. And so I feel like it's important to just clarify that. I'm sorry I left it out. Sorry for the abruptness. And back to your regularly scheduled program. And so the next part I feel like, which is really, really important and definitely something I did not do, is to have a dream, have a dream job. Do you want to specifically work in the reptile department? Do you want to work with mammals? Whatever it is, have a specific job that you really have your eye on because this industry is small, it's competitive, and it's very limited in resources. It does not pay well in many of these positions. And is it really practical for you to give all your time away to be doing really dirty jobs, cleaning up after animals for 10 bucks an hour? Is that practical to your lifestyle to support you? Because for me, it just was not. And so giving your time away is something that's most ideal when you're in school or you live with your parents and you have that time, which can be extremely helpful, important, and really just help you overall when you're in this industry of exotic animals. Now, of course, you can also go in the direction of being a veterinarian. And so that takes a lot of school. So much um, effort is required there. I give so much respect. My stepmom is a vet. And so I know firsthand what it's like and what they have to go through, at least through her experience. And I know she's worked so, so hard um, for an industry that can just be absolutely brutal. And it's even harder to get into than medical school. So I was not pursuing that because of many different reasons, but all my respect to those of you who do, you definitely have to continue school and know from the get-go what school you're trying to go to. And this is something that people are really, really driven to do. And it seems like the ones who are really, really set on being a vet, they always go and get it. So. I can't speak much on that because that wasn't my career path, but starting with zoology as a bachelor's degree could be a great foundation for that career. Since we're on the topic of school, the next thing is to really, really work with your advisor. My advisor is the only reason that I'm sitting here today in my career because he helped me and he said, all right, what are we going to do with this degree that you're getting, right? I'm a shy person. I never wanted to go to my advisor on my own but i stepped out of my comfort zone i talked to him he was really friendly thankfully and so he made it really easy so shout out to you dr hegna at pba palm beach atlantic university is the school that i went to for my zoology degree and he again is the reason that i'm sitting here right now in my career at this moment and so Working with your advisor and your professors is super important to help lay the foundation and have a plan for what you want to do. Again, having a dream job in mind can really help you, I believe, go get it once you're really set on something. And that's really hard when you're in school because you're so preoccupied with other things. But 
I feel like it would have helped me out a lot and maybe would have gotten me to a position quicker and a position that I was super, super in love with. The next tip I have for you guys is to be persistent but flexible. Again, going back to this industry and these careers, oftentimes they do not pay well at all and it's not even practical for an adult lifestyle to live on. And nobody should have to choose between a, their dream job and surviving. And so sometimes we have to be flexible with our dreams. I'm not saying flush them down the toilet, but for a moment, you might have to work a job that you might not really love, such as these zoo positions. Many of the times you start out in like an office position and then you have to work your way up. But what I've noticed with the zoos is that it seems like you kind of get to a certain place and you can't go higher. And if that is your dream job and you absolutely Absolutely love it then obviously there's no issues there but if that's not what your idea of your dream is then you might want to step out of that for something that's more profitable for the moment or something that will give you a different skill set and techniques that you can use to build your resume building your resume is really important it prioritizes you and it's something I always encourage to make extremely creative and unique and just make yourself stand out and so again, volunteering, things like that are most ideal when you're in school or with your parents. Otherwise, you have to make time for it in your everyday life um, between working and family and whatever else you might have going on. So being persistent, keep going at your dreams within zoology. It's not easy, but it is possible and it's really progressing. The industry is growing and so a lot of people within the animal industry are now on social media and so that has really blown up for a lot of different people and they're be they've become very successful but we always want to be representative in a responsible way. Now when, when you see Animal Planet or listen on the radio all of this stuff is edited and designed for entertainment and the internet really is no different. So many of these people on social media, which is a reason I've kind of stepped back taking my face off of it a bit more, is because the representation is a little bit blurred when it becomes the internet because it's all up to the creator. And not every creator is accurately representing the zoological world. And I don't have a problem with that because at the end of the day, the internet was created for entertainment. That's what gets the views. That's what gets the likes. And there's not an issue with that. But when it comes to living creatures and misrepresentations actually leading to legislation in different states that actually harm the animal industry. They're taking the rights away from private citizens to own certain species where this is basically saying, hey, only the government is allowed to own these species and you have lost your right as a private citizen. Well, this comes from, I don't want to say like the bad people, but the people that are representing the animal industry poorly or just in a way that's not true and eventually after enough time this stuff builds up and it actually gets legislation put in place that actually hurts keepers of the private sector and now we have to jump through hoops that are quite impossible to do so that allow us to own certain species and i never want to be a part of that i'm not a fan of the federal government saying we are the only ones that are allowed to own specific species of animals i think that animals are a part of our planet and we should have those rights at least within our states and that has been rapidly changing especially in florida which is a hot spot for animal keepers and people who want to work in this industry because we're one of the few places where you can actually get your hands on some of the most exotic, rare, and dangerous species in captivity. And so it just really makes me sad when I see that the rights are being taken away from the private citizens and tale as old as time these large organizations and special interest groups get the priority and get all of the rights. And at the end of the day, that is not about animals or even small businesses. These are just a few of the tips. Um, at the zoology degree, I have gone into teaching. I'm qualified to teach science. And so that is where I have taken my career right now. And I implement zoology in all of my lessons. I have class pets. I'm spreading the truth about animals that they see on social media, especially the exotic species like primates, and especially the venomous snakes. And so it's something I've become I've, I'm learning a lot still, but I've really come to have a love for it. I hope to be a part of the positive representation within zoology and zoological education and hands-on experiences with animals, which I think that we should all have the right to do. And so I'm not sure if I missed anything here. 
but thank you so much for watching this video like and subscribe if you would like it kind of feels weird to say that but apparently youtube likes when you say that and so that is about it for today i hope to see you guys next time and thank you so much for watching bye